You know, today we're not really talking about just writing code. We're going bigger than that. We're digging into the philosophy, the very mindset that separates software that lasts for decades from software that just becomes a total nightmare to maintain. Let's dive in. Oh, we have all been there, right? You see a notification for some small, simple update. You tap install and then chaos. The whole app starts crashing in ways that make absolutely no sense. It's gotta be one of the most frustrating things in our digital lives. And it's a huge clue that there's a much deeper problem hiding under the surface. So that experience, the one that makes you wanna throw your phone across the room, that's not just a fluke or bad luck. It's a symptom of something that engineers call the fragile software problem. And it's a giant red flag that the very foundation of the app is unstable. And it really does feel like a house of cards, doesn't it? The software is just brittle. You touch one thing and the whole structure starts to wobble. It becomes unpredictable, which means even simple bug fixes or adding a new feature suddenly feels like this massive, high-stakes gamble. Okay, so how do we actually diagnose this? Well, software architects have specific names for these symptoms. They call them design smells. And they're like warning signs that tell you something is fundamentally wrong with how the whole thing is put together. So the first big symptom is something called rigidity. This is when you try to make one tiny logical change, but it forces you to go hunt down and change code in a dozen other places you didn't expect. The system basically fights you every single step of the way. And that makes development slow, it makes it expensive, and honestly, it's just painful for everyone involved. For a business, this is where budgets get blown and deadlines get missed. And then there's the second symptom, which, let's be honest, is even more terrifying. That's fragility. This is when you fix one bug over here and suddenly two brand new, totally unrelated bugs pop up over there. The system is so tangled up that any change can cause these disastrous side effects. You end up playing this endless game of whack-a-mole with bugs and you lose your user's trust with every single update. So what's the real problem here? What's causing all this rigidity and fragility? Well, it pretty much boils down to one single thing, dependencies that are managed poorly. When every part of your software is directly wired into every other part, you don't really have a system. You have a knot, a tangled mess of wires where you can't touch one without yanking on all the others. And this right here, this visualizes the whole thing perfectly. Over on the left, you've got what's called high coupling. That's the tangled mess we're talking about, where everything's completely independent. But on the right, that's the goal. That's low coupling. Here, the modules are clean, they're independent, and they just talk to each other through these clear, well-defined channels. So, how in the world do we get from that tangled disaster on the left to the clean architecture on the right? The answer is in this really powerful, kind of radical idea that's at the very heart of object-oriented design. We have to invert control. Let's look at the old way of doing things first. In the traditional approach, your really important high-level code, you know, the business rules, it depends directly on the low-level details, like a specific kind of database or a particular user interface framework. So if you ever want to change that database, guess what? You have to change your core business logic. This right here is the source of all that rigidity. But here's the game changer. The object-oriented approach says, no, let's break that direct link. We put an abstraction. You can think of it like a contract or an interface or even a set of plugs on a wall right in the middle. Now the high-level business logic depends on that contract. And you know what? The low-level detail also depends on that same contract. They don't depend on each other anymore. And this little trick, it has a name. It's the dependency and version principle. And it's pure magic. Look at how the arrow of dependency is flipped. It now points away from the detail and toward the abstraction. This simple flip is totally revolutionary because it means your high level and low level parts can be built, tested, and shipped completely independently of each other. Your database, your user interface, they just become plugins to your main application. This is the kind of thinking that saves companies millions of dollars in the long run. Now, this whole idea of managing dependencies isn't just some vague philosophy. It's actually been spelled out in a set of five super powerful design principles. Together, they're known as solid. And these are the practical, hands-on rules that help us build systems that are flexible and easy to maintain. So, the five principles are single responsibility, open-closed, Liskob substitution, interface segregation, and of course, the one we just talked about, dependency inversion. We're not going to go through all of them today, but let's just dig into that first one to see how powerful this way of thinking is. Let's focus on that first one because it is so fundamental. It's the single responsibility principle. And the source material puts it just perfectly. 
a class should have one and only one reason to change. A reason to change here is really about a person or a group of people who would ask for that change. Think about it like this. The principle is all about grouping things together. You gather up the code that changes for the same reasons or for the same people, and you keep it together. And you separate out the code that changes for different reasons. This is what prevents a change requested by, say, the accounting team from accidentally breaking a feature that the marketing team depends on. So when you take a step back and look at the big picture, you start to see that all of these principles, dependency inversion, single responsibility, they're all working toward one single powerful goal. It's all about designing for change. It's about building systems that can actually evolve over time without collapsing under their own weight. And the difference in philosophy really couldn't be more clear. With traditional design, your dependencies point toward the nitty gritty details, and that makes your system rigid and fragile. The goal is just make it work right now. But with object-oriented design, the dependencies point toward abstractions, creating these modular, maintainable systems. The goal isn't just to make it work now, it's to make it easy to change later. So what does that get you in the real world? It means that the core logic of your business shouldn't know or even care that it's being used on a website. The web, the database you choose, all the frameworks, those are just details. They should be plugins to your application, not the other way around. So I'll leave you with this final, really powerful question that comes straight from our source material. When you look at the blueprints for a software system, the architecture itself, what should it scream out at you? Should it scream web system, telling you all about how it's delivered? Or should it scream accounting system, telling you what its actual purpose is? The answer to that question, well, it reveals everything about its design.